today I got up at seven o'clock and then climbed what felt like a mountain but was just the coast of Falmouth uh, and I don't usually get up at 7.30, I have to have a really good bloody reason, partly this glorious sunshine, but secondly, I'm going to Verdun, who have stormed onto the UK scene, making incredible, hazy, low bitterness beers. In fact, one beer that was called No IBU. I don't know how I feel about that particular beer, but they make some absolute juice bombs, and I want to go down and see how they're doing it better than most of the guys in the UK. I'm also gonna discover the fact that they have lots of other strings to their bow, stuff that they haven't released yet, stuff that they're planning that makes them one of the most exciting breweries, not just in the UK, but probably in the world. Oh my days. So I am sat here uh, with two of the founders of Verdant Brewing Company, um, who were James Head Brewer and That's Adam nice. Head of... The World of Verdant. The World of Verdant. <laughs> You've made yourself sound very important there. Um, and we just spent the morning, uh, well I spent the morning watching you guys brew and generally getting in the way. And you're brewing track and field. Track and field today. Um, yeah. Version 3. Version 3. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll get to track and field because it, it's a little bit left field from what people know you for. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we'll first get into who you are and what, what it is you do and then we'll we'll expand on that so can sure. you tell me sort of where Verdon came from because I think most people saw you as sort of a bolt out of the blue a bit of a mm. Carl Edmund if you will <laughs> <laughs> Top <of> uh, <laughs> where did Verdon come from I think it came from um, sort of mutual adventures into the world of homebrew absolutely and drinking beers that we weren't really been able to get I remember rasping bitterness massive bitterness from beers in the States just being like like huge tropical fruits and then bitterness and just like bloody hell that's phenomenal it's sort of all-encompassing isn't it yeah absolutely bitterness just, fruitiness just, I've always looked towards the States I mean I know I know the the history of brewing over here and what goes on here because you know surrounded by it growing up but what seemed new and vital was what's going on over there the beers you brew are sort of the next step along from that so there was the the big there was the bitter arms race in america where people mm. brew bigger and bigger and bitter and bitter beers whereas yours were a bit easier drinking was that was that another visit to the states or was that that was yeah i remember it. Sure quite your crazy. immense research wasn't it yeah in, in I, beer, just, really. I just remember like when we started brewing sort of uh with intent in a shipping container in a quarry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> with which, a goat um, called Elvis. Yeah. <laughs> but initially that's we quite bought an intense homebrew setup. Shed loads of hops. We bought, yeah, that's it. We bought a ton of hops, didn't we? Uh, yeah, well, it wasn't well, a ton in weight, but it was a lot of hops. A I just, I just ton of yeah, hops. yeah, the metaphorical. I had like 15 or 16 varieties of yeah. hops. And we, uh, just off the bat, yeah. <laughs> and like, yeah. you know, and then before you even brewed, you're yeah, just like, this yeah. will be easy. Yeah. Well, other than other than just brewing on the kitchen hob. Your your core cool mm. range through those four beers, they're not the murky New England. There's clarity to them. There's bitterness yeah. to yeah. them. They but were you born want... out of necessity, though. Yeah, for that core range. Right. But know? the idea was always to brew the murky beers yes. that we could, but we never had the ability to use. Well, we only ever well, had we the can... dish bottom fermenters and. Using the, reusing yeast, using and, the wet yeast, yeah. and, and then and looking after it requires yeah. a full time role. And, yeah. and we were like one day a week brewers, yeah. the rest of the week holding down other jobs, you know. Yeah, and then so light bulb headband, bloom, and pulp were beers that took on all the techniques and characteristics of brewing a juicy, relatively low IBA, IBU beer but instead of using a traditional English yeast to amplify it, we subbed in uh, just a dried yeast because it took a massive headache out of the equation. And, and that's USO how those five beers, was the yeast. That was the yeast. Yeah. And, it, and all of a sudden, those beers, you know, people started to latch onto them. And they were, I genuinely think, they were and are a bit different to other USO5 beers out there mm. because 
um, of all the other elements to it. They co- come from a different place, haven't they? Exactly. Yeah. They come from yeah. a different style of beer at the beginning. So we're trying to brew our beer. We're just fermenting it with O5, I think. Yeah. It's just Basically, yeah, that, yeah. I think I think that's it. And, and, it, and it kind of works, you know. And then you moving back towards the more New England style. It's not like we've not done it before. No. You know, we didn't just sort of have a tremendous amount of luck. We'd put a whole bunch of practice in there. We did headband New England, called it Milkshake, in 15. That's right. Launched yeah, it in yeah. Ham Bar in yeah. town. Yeah. And people went crazy for it. It was just yeah. crazy, crazy, crazy. But we just couldn't brew it all the time. Yeah. So it was just kind of... A and it was just headband with a different yeast. Yeah. That's Identical it. beer. And it was completely different profile yeah so is, is it fair to say that there is so you guys are known for that new england style particularly in that small sort of nerdy subset that that yeah where i have lived in. the whole of my life yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> that we're all trapped in yeah but yeah, in our is, bubble <laughs> is, is it fair to say that you want to be known for a little bit more like obviously track and field is, is a, it's it's not a juicy banger it's it's quite savory it's quite bitter yeah and then you you like if we must which yeah it's a completely brilliant. different yeah, element to it brilliant. with the grape juice yeah. it's about um realizing that within the let's call it the ipa wedge of the beer uh, circle um there's so many different styles within that you know yeah. adding grape juice from a local vineyard with baits from duration is obviously uh, one style and they just love that beer mm. there's the uh the uso5 type ones that we've done and continue to do there's the juicier uh, hazier, um, softer ones with 1318 or Conan yeast. There's just, and then you know, we haven't even touched things like um, working on lagers, hop lagers, and India pale lagers, or whatever you want to call them. There's just a lot, or um, hoppy American wheat. You, you talk mostly yeah. about yeast. You, obviously, well, hops the, are the heroes in most people's <coughs> eyes, but yeah. the variation of seeing your beers is quite quite often the yeast, even though people see it as a hop forward brewery. Well, the, yeah, I think the yeast is yeast and water the character, profile, doesn't it? Yeah, and water, yeah, water, yeah. yeah. Mouth feel, yep. thing. feeling. People need to feel the beer, I think. Is that, I don't know, it's not easy to shove a ton of beer, uh, ye- uh, hops into a beer, but it is hard to make a beer feel good. Secure um, the yeah. hop varieties yeah. you want and yeah. make sure they're the best hop, uh, best quality you can get. And then that's pretty much that bit organised. Yeah. The real art is, yeah. um, you know, playing around with the the water. You know, we're blessed with really good base soft water. Cornish water. I mean, it's and it's not even soft compared to some parts of Cornwall. It's like they class it as moderately soft, mm. but it is actually pretty soft yeah. compared to what the London guys have to contend yeah. with. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So we but don't you get have out to, the shower just crusty. Yeah. 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 So we don't have to worry about you know um, an RO system or, and mm. cutting the mains water or whatever. We we just work from we just filter it to take any chlorine out and then go for it. Mm. You know, trying to get that soft, big body but very velvety experience um, with a hint of bitterness and just all the juice. Always a hint of bitterness. Yeah, it needs to be a beer. But then you also did the beer that was... People kept ordering Noibu. Noibu. They didn't quite understand. Mm. Did, did you call it Noibu? Noibu. Yeah. You didn't call it No IBU? It, no. Was, it was Noibu. It was Noibu, <laughs> okay. Well, then yeah. I was. Well. Yeah. So what was what was the thing behind that? You want a bit of bitterness, but was that just like to push the boundaries, just see what happened? Uh, as it I was Ross, wasn't it, from Northern Monk, who <coughs> kind of came up with the idea. He came up with the No IBU one, yeah. and I was like, cool. No first word, nothing. No, just... nothing, nothing. And, um, you know, going high on the, on the soft water profile and uh, I think the only hot the lupulin powder was added at about 70 degrees in the whirlpool yeah so there's no assomerization no, no nothing water. going on there and then dry hopped it as well even though it was, it was a no IBU beer it didn't seem that far away from some of the other New England beers that were mm. being released in the UK yeah so evidently IBUs have dropped to the point because obviously you say like you can't really taste over 80 I don't think we can really taste under maybe 10, 15, yeah. like the, the lagers, the macro lagers. Are I think don't underestimate the IBUs you get from dry hop as exactly. well. Exactly. Yeah. So, do you mean there are IBUs being added to a beer just because it's not on hot side? You know, isn't it? There's not well, I remember when thing. we were um, on the small kit, we went through this massive stage of not doing any hot side hopping, really. We said, let's pull that right back. Yeah. And just go on the dry hop. And then recently we've sort of reintroduced the kind of... Um, we used to do two steeps. Two steeps. Yeah, I was, I was chatting to Johnny a bit earlier today about that. We, um, 
we used to do two steeps of flame out and then a sub 80 yeah and then we just because the ridic- what we thought was a ridiculous amount of hops that we were using <laughs> on the sub, <laughs> on the sub little, 80 little well, yeah. In, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we decided to knock that one on the head uh, so that we could actually launch as a brewery and try and sell some beer and survive <laughs> but it's kind of funny that we're, we've come full circle and we're actually you know reintroducing this the second whirlpool at a lower temperature for but some of our that's a lot to do with having the the kit as well right the whirlpool and it works yeah and correct me if i'm wrong cornwall is not the most progressive beer scene no so lower your voice man. sorry sorry man. <laughs> 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 you are in cornwall <laughs> right now <laughs> um, so how much of your your beer is staying here and how much of it is is going elsewhere in the uk exporting um, to devon or god forbid further yeah, do you know what? With somebody did an article on us once and said we export all our beer, and that means it leaves the county. <laughs> it's, um, so we're 100 percent exporting. We're not. We do about, I'd say it was just under five percent of the beer stays locally. Mm-hmm. The rest of it goes out up to sort of as initially sort of Exeter's probably the first port of call, maybe Plymouth, and then Bristol, and then it's London, Manchester, Leeds, all the big sort of cities. Yeah, that is changing. There is a bigger kind of um, interest in our beer now, but definitely sort of the lower ABV, your light bulb, kind of in pubs on tap. So the the obvious question is 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 why Falmouth? Is that you guys have grown? Well, up we here? live here, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think um, I'm not going to. You leave. had a belief it would work here, we or it carry would... on living. We never here. even thought about it, did we? We didn't think. <laughs> yeah, we didn't sit down it. and go, we don't work in Falmouth. We just went, we just want to make great beer, right? Well, yeah, I think quite often the way to it wasn't carry a business on living decision, there, no, was it? Yeah. But it you often like, have to invent a job yeah. to live in a beautiful part of any country. Yeah. You know, there's, you don't always move somewhere if you're not from that part of the world with a job. You, you just have to be a bit creative and come up with We're something. We're just 100% certain that the beer that we could brew was good and somebody would want it. So whether we export it or import whatever, we just we get the beer into the world. And I guess maybe when we started, the idea was let's get it into the world and see what happens. And then people from Cornwall pick up. Cornwall's very, we have a lot of people coming into the county. Mm. And now we have a lot of people coming into county, going into pubs saying, have you got any verdant? And the barman's like, well, I want verdant. Yeah. And you're like, well, okay. And now they're getting in touch with us saying, people are asking for your beer, so what's your price list? And, and then you need to explain to them that. <laughs> and then they have a heart attack when they see it. Well, it's not so much the price. Yeah. It, it's like, we don't have a core range. We don't have stock. Mm. So it's weekly. So it's like, we can let you know what's available this week and next week and the week after and the week after. Whereas they want to latch on to one But they want to latch beer. on to one beer. You're doomed by, you're kind of like, they think we'll have this one almighty beer that just kind of will go on the pumps everywhere and so it's going to take something yeah. off uh, something really consistent yeah we need to regular. replace a beer on the bar that's the I thing had, uh, had an interesting chat so i was at st austell yesterday and i was chatting to roger their head brewer and he said that some people brew uh, some people build a, a beer brand which they have done with tribute and mm-hmm. some people build a, a brewery brand which is kind of what verdant have done yes. so you you buy a verdant beer you don't necessarily buy that's, bloom or pulp that's or, quite a clever way of thinking about it i mean you guys you're you're a sm- tiny brewery yeah mm. absolutely. Um, but you again within the bubble and i think slightly external of the bubble you've made quite a lot of noise so people might think you're bigger than you are yeah. <laughs> so you know if we looked at twitter reach you probably have a bigger twitter reach than maybe a bigger brewery might. i've never heard that saying before. sorry i, but I, I like it marketing on yeah. twitter reach <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, so that's a long way a long-winded way of asking when, when you get your feedback together and look at your recipes are you looking at what other people are saying about the beer or is it just your palates that are informing that decision i i definitely look at uh reviews and people's opinions i think it's important i know that there's you know there's going to be some stuff that's just doesn't make sense or is ridiculous but like untapped for example it is what it is but from my love it or hate it well i love it actually because it's a what you know the more reviews you get um the more of an average you get so it's the laws yeah, so you have of to averages. look at it collectively don't yeah. Yeah. focus on that one yeah, review that, that one says guy. taste of plastic yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah yeah exactly <laughs> wet plaster um you know i i i find them really useful i'm not one of these guys that's like ooh untapped load of rubbish i think no actually really a uh, viable tool mm. and, i agree 100% useful. with what james is saying 100% it is the tool that you have to it's the only way really apart from doing events 
and yeah. meeting the drinkers and people telling you but generally you're surrounded by guys that are already fans at events which is hard yeah it's so, like playing a festival that's where you know yeah, that's exactly. where you get real people food people buy yeah. tickets yeah. because they you're, love you you're playing yeah. yeah so it's um but when i look at untapped i think last year we we kind of discovered that people like liked beers sweeter than we did like, yes and possibly yeah there was yeah, I, guess I think we would have dried the beers out a little bit more, yeah. but people were loving this kind of sweet, really sweet kind of hop forward kicking IPAs. I think Mary Lou, especially for us, on that respect. And Neil. And Neil, yeah, yeah. Neil gets things done. Yep. So that's where you get your feedback. And people would like, I get sort of what, 30 even tweets a week saying, When you bring Neil again, when you bring Neil again. Come yeah, on, Neil really yeah. blew up yeah, in the Neil, world, yeah, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. I preferred yeah, further. I thought yeah, further they, was yeah, absolutely. the so, beer that made me, yeah. well, and Putty as well, which was my beer of 20 Further was Big Neil, basically, wasn't it? Big yeah. Neil. <laughs> and Howl is like, Really big Neil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And how I'm Gavin. glad someone else came up with the names for all those beers. It wasn't yeah, just you going, yeah. Well, we've got Neil, big Neil, and really big Neil. Yeah, yeah. 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 So where, where is Verdun going to go? Like you, got, you talked about the dream of, of you know maybe one day making this a, a wild brewery and then having this a, one here, yeah, and then moving yeah, having a, a bigger it, yeah. clean brewery. Yeah. I, I guess that's the dream of most brewers, but is that a genuine intention? I think it'd be a genuine intention if we could actually give that wild brewery the attention that we gave the IPA brewery. Like right. yeah, Verdun so, yeah. was all about just like this is what we want to do. We're going to nail these beers and we're going to make them the best. We're still trying to improve the uh, original four beers, like Bob Yeah, Head, absolutely. Yeah, those are the ones we wrestle with most of it. Yeah, personally, yeah. it's like that core range of beer. Just let's have no, one, shall yeah, we? Let, yeah, absolutely. Like, Bloom is that my favourite. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> we are, yeah, you know, so we're constantly playing around with those. And so, so the the sour beer might might be the dream. Is is that a if that's a genuine intention, where where are you going to go up until then? I see some barrels. Yeah, so those yeah. barrels have got. Uh, so we brewed an imperial stout. Um, shock. And <laughs> that's yeah, got shock dark yeah. and yeah. I things. know. Yeah, we just about scraped through at ten percent with it yeah. as well. So yeah. you know, even though the original Russian imperial stouts were usually around eight or nine percent, yeah. but let's not go there. And, uh, <laughs> history history you know. is what you make it I've yeah, heard. Yeah. absolutely so we we kegged half of it and chucked the rest in uh three bourbon barrels and one uh rum. nicaraguan rum yeah is it from nicaraguan yeah. so you're going to be blending barrel. those or releasing them blending. single blending right. yeah. Right. Yeah. blend That's them exciting. all uh not quite decided exactly what sort of package or how we're going to do it but 750 sharers it probably will be that wax dip just to really piss off the people going come <laughs> on <laughs> double, double wax <laughs> double wax <laughs> double, double but wax. you work for it <laughs> and cork and cap <laughs> GWD <laughs> um, well yeah so I mean coming down here has, has been it's something I've wanted to do for a long long time ever since I drank um Roy Roy gets a highlight. Roy 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 which we yeah. drank in January last year and Roy put it in our. Roy better be turning up today, by the way, because there's six full. Wait, so IBCs. Roy's a real person. Roy's he's a, a real room. person. And yeah. Hilux is pronounced Hilux because yeah. those are the two main questions. We, said, we <laughs> love this beer, but what the hell is this name about? Roy's yeah. our farmer, and yeah. he deals Hiluxes. Yeah. And he comes in a different van each week, wow. and we're like, Roy, I want. Is a he trying to get Hilux. you to buy one? But he he deals them to the Middle East. Oh. Yeah. And it's Hilux, <laughs> not Hilux. Hilux, yeah. yeah. And it's Ver... No, not Ver... <laughs> <laughs> Come on. So anyway, really you funny. bloody <laughs> want to it. Verdant. Yeah. Verdant. Verdant. <laughs> Verdant. Verdu. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so we, we drank that beer and we loved it, even if we didn't fully understand it. Yeah. Um, I remember that video. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's... We yeah. didn't really yeah. understand that's the, the, day, uh, or the title of the beer. Some, uh, uh, you, you guys, day, uh, Villages, who villages, that's still the haven't one. had their big moment, and Little yeah. Earth Project, who, yeah. again, is another brewery that everyone talks about, but no one can taste, because, yeah. I mean, the dude has probably fewer barrels than you do at three. Um, <laughs> four. <coughs> four. <laughs> four. Sorry, sorry, four. We've got four. Yeah. Um, so... Got to start somewhere, man. I'm, sorry, I didn't mean to make that sound like I'm being a dick. Oh, I mean, no. how many barrels do I have? Um, I don't know. Just, <laughs> just no. the one. Hey, that's a six pack, mate. Um, so I think, as much as we knew that beer was brilliant, we are surprised by how far your, um, I mean, your beer is always great. How far the the brewery has come in terms of its name, in terms of its 
reach as well. Um, are you surprised or did you expect that? Never expected it. Or did you hope it. for that? I hoped for it. Definitely hoped for it. Um, never expected it. We work really hard at it. Mm. Yep. It's not easy. We haven't had the time to even stop and mm. actually contemplate what the hell's going on. Yeah. It's just... Um, I'm just on a constant quest to try and treadmill. improve the beer, <laughs> make it better, yeah. make the next one better, make the next one better. Yeah. I'm never happy with it, and uh, Rich certainly is never happy with it, no. which is great <laughs> because it just pushes you further and yeah. pushes you further. And it's like, you know, I, yeah. it, I think it was another interview a few months ago about something, and I said, look, I'm maybe 85% happy with the, with the beers as a whole. And uh, the aim is to get to maybe 90 or 95, and that's it. Like, you I know, think it's harder for these that. guys though, because because the, they are at the brewery like majority of the time. I get to go out and experience the beers at events with people. And see the smiling and, faces. Well, you they? do. You get to see the smiling faces, and time and place is massive with beer. So you're drinking a beer when everyone around you is enjoying themselves and happy, and they're, they're going, "Wow, it's amazing! This is great." And then sometimes you just sit down and you drink the beer and, and you can really have an honest critique about it. I think those are really special times. I can sort of come back to the brewery and tell the guys, people are loving it. And we all sit around and drink it and go, well, it could be, could be better here, it could be better there. They're not as stunning as they were when I was in the pub at <laughs> half 12 at night. <laughs> you know I mean? it's just that. Yeah. Like you said, when we were tasting those beers this morning and, and we, we cracked putty and... I think probably you guys loved it even more than I did, and that was my beer of the year last year. Oh come on, man! You went, you went whoop whoop. <laughs> you, pushed, you took your shirt off and swung it around yeah. your head. Yeah. You got a yellow card. So. Up the putt. Up yeah. the putt. <laughs> <laughs> um, guys, thanks so much for having me. Yeah. Uh, thanks, thanks so much for coming, for man. Really, thanks and, for coming. Uh, we Appreciate don't shake it. hands here. We, we, uh, do we, we chin chin. We clink. Cheers. Cheers. Um,